right, hello everyone and welcome to the first video in my new series that we're calling the Master Series. And in the Master Series, we're looking at some more advanced features and functionality of 5M, things you might not be aware of or things you might not know how to use well. And we're gonna try to do a little bit of a deep dive into these topics and see what we can learn about them and find out how you can use them in your projects, your resources, your servers. And for this very first Master Series episode, we are going to be looking at state bags, which are an amazing feature of OneSync. If you're coming over from the Zero to Hero series, today we talked about uh, sharing data between client and server, communicating using events and commands. And in this Master Series, we're going to look at another way of sharing information between client and server, and that's with state bags. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what state bags are. And you can think of state bags as a table of information that can be attached to any networked entity. Um, so we can have a state bag attached to a ped, uh, or we could have it attached to a vehicle or maybe a network networked object we've created. And this state can be accessed by the server and accessed by uh, any other player or client who is in scope of that entity. There's also state bag change handlers, which behave a little bit like events, where the function will be called when the state bag on something that we're listening for changes. Now, there's also a global state bag, which is uh, basically one big state bag that is shared between client and server. It's not tied to any specific entity. It just kind of exists and all of the clients can access it. Now, one thing that's important to note is that in its default form, um, without any other modifications, uh, state back, global state can only be modified by the server. So all of the clients can access it, but only the server can change it. So it's authoritative in that way. Whereas on the client side, clients can change the state of entities that they own. So let's look at how this works. And what we're gonna start out with first is looking at global state. All right, so this is gonna be a very simple example. We're just gonna keep a counter of a number uh, that we can increment on the server and we'll see how that's reflected on the client. So I'm just going to go in here and set up just a little thread here where we will say global state, which is how we access a global the global state bag. And then we'll just say counter is equal to zero. And then let's also register a command and this command will only be available server side. We're going to be calling this from the server side. And uh, when we call the increment command, we're just going to say global state dot counter is equal to global state dot counter plus one. All right. And then on the client, let's just create a thread here. And then we'll say, well, true. And we'll run this every half second and we will just print the global state dot counter out. Now I've got two clients here. One of them seems to be a little stuck. Oh, there it goes, which is uh, something we're gonna be looking at later. But if we look up at the top left 5M client, we can see that uh, we're printing out zero because we haven't incremented at all. Now let me just bring this over here. And then if I run the increment command uh, on the server, you'll see that we're now reflecting that on the client with one, two, and three. So you'll note that we're not sending any events back and forth. All the server had to do was change this global state and all of the clients immediately have access to that. Now let's look at another potential way we can do this. I'm just gonna stop state bags so we're not getting spammed while we look at this. Now, instead of running this in a thread, I mentioned that you can also use change handlers to hook into these. So let's take a look at that. And so we can see add state bag change handler, key filter, bag filter, and then the handler. And the handler has a couple parameters on it. So let me just split these windows really quick, make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And let's look at implementing this. So add state bag change handler. And our key filter is going to be counter because that's the key that we're looking for. And the bag filter is going to be global. At least I'm pretty sure it is. We're gonna find out. And then our handler is going to have bag name, key value reserved and replicated, which uh, some of these aren't going to matter, but let's just go ahead and print all of them out. So now instead of running a thread to keep an eye on that global state, we can just react when it changes. So we can see uh, we had that initial one, uh, which our value is gonna be our third parameter there. And let me just do increment. Perfect. And so that's a little bit about how state bag change handlers work. Now, so far we've only been looking at global state bags. So now let's look at some uh, other state bags. And the one we're going to look at is player state. 
So let's talk about how we set player state. So when we are on the client, the way we're gonna set player state is we're just gonna say local player dot state dot, you know, foo equals bar. Now this is one way of doing it. I like to use the set function because it's a little bit more clear to me what's happening here. And we can also control if it's replicated or not. So we could say foo is equal to bar and true because we wanna replicate that to the server. So this is how we can set state on ourselves on the client. Now, if we're on the server and we want to change the state of a player, let's say our player's server ID is one. Uh, we're gonna say player and then player ID dot state. And then same thing, we can either use set uh, and then we can access it like that. So let's try that. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna register a command called client increment on the client. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna grab the uh, old counter or zero and then, oops, and then set state to the old number plus one. And then on the server, why don't we, why don't we just do this as an example? So we're gonna get into our while loop. And once again, we'll just wait half a second and we're gonna do, so we're just gonna get all players and we are just going to print their server ID and then player server ID dot state dot counter. All right, let's restart our state bag script. And you'll see that one and two are both showing up here and it's nil because we haven't ran the CL ink command yet. So let's do that on client one. Do CL ink, perfect. And now we can see that, well, one is equal to two. Now three and four. And if we jump over to our other client and do CL ink here, we should see that reflected on client two. Perfect. All right, so now we've learned how to use player state to set it on the client and reflect that on the server. And once again, you could you could set it on the server and reflect it on the client. Um, that's a little bit trickier for the, uh, the state bag change handler if you wanted to use that. Um, effectively, what you're going to want to do is your uh, bag filter is going to be player colon and then the player's server ID. So um, not the cleanest format, uh, but it does work and you can kind of listen for state bag changes on yourself that way. So now let's, uh, let's dive in and look at setting and managing state on entities that aren't players. So I'm just going to uh, nuke all of my code here. Oops and restart the resource just to get it to stop printing. And let's think about what we want to accomplish here. So let's say we want to set uh, a, a state bag on a vehicle that tells you who the last driver of the vehicle was. So I'm going to use a couple things here. I'm going to use base events to determine when a player uh, enters a vehicle. And if we jump over to the docs, we should, let me just kind of organize things here. Let's see, stock resources, base events and entered vehicle. Okay, perfect. So let's build this out really quick. So we should get this event and let me just turn on word wrap so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so we should uh, on the server, this event should be called when a player enters a vehicle and we're just gonna say if C index is not equal to negative one, then return otherwise, what we want to do is set a state bag on the vehicle. So for vehicles, instead of using player, we use entity. And one thing that's important to note is you need to use the entity handle, not the entity's network ID here. So in this case, the uh, current vehicle is likely going to be the server ID, I believe. You know what, after a, uh, a quick look at the base events resource, there's actually an undocumented uh, parameter here um, vehicle net ID, which is going to be the fourth one. So I'm just going to say, uh, we're going to assign a variable vehicle entity and we're just going to say get entity 
ID from network ID. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Let me double check. Network get entity from network ID. There we go. And we're gonna provide the vehicle net ID. All right. And then we're gonna say entity vehicle entity dot state dot last driver. Or actually let's use set. Set last driver is equal to um, the ID person who triggered this event, which is gonna be source there. So we'll say that and then player ID. All right, so that should, assuming we've done everything right here, this should set a state bag called last driver on the vehicle itself with the ID of the player who last got in the driver's seat. And now um, we just need to implement a way to check that on the client side. So down here on the client, I'm just gonna register a command called get last driver. And now I also have a raycasting resource, uh, utility resource that I'm gonna be using for this. And so uh, all I need to do is say entity ID is equal to get hit entity. And then uh, we can just print uh, entity entity ID dot bleep, state dot last driver. And we're kind of winging this. Everything right. I'm gonna start base events. I'm gonna start raycast, and I'm going to restart state bags. Which okay, perfect. So let's see if this worked out for us. Um, so you can see my my raycast utility here uh, is just gonna draw to entities and highlight them, and then I can get whatever I'm looking at. So if we get into our vehicle and then get out of it and then we get the state bag for it, you can see that it is two. Now what's great here is it's not just that client, uh, any other client. So we're gonna take this guy over here and we're gonna have him come take a look at it and they can also access the state bag that says it's two. And now if we were to get in it and then use uh, our second client to try to get the last driver again, you can see it's been changed to one. So state bags are incredibly powerful for keeping information about an entity around. Some good examples of things I've used state bags for in the past include um, if a player's handcuffed or not, or if they have any injuries, uh, as well as for vehicles, obviously fuel level, um, for peds also if their seat belts on. So there's just an endless amount of things that you can use state bags for and sharing inform information between client and server really simply. So just uh, imagine this scenario, let's take the handcuff scenario. Let's say that a player is handcuffed and you have you know maybe a radial menu for police where they can uncuff, right? And we want this radial menu to not suck. So when the player's not cuffed, we want the, the option to say handcuff. And when they are cuffed, we want it to say uncuff. Well, how would you do that before? Maybe when they open the radial menu and they're looking at a player, you go call the server and ask for information about that player. That's not a great time, right? So if we just have a state bag on the player is cuffed that's set to true or false, then the client can access that information about the player they're looking at without ever having to talk to the server about it or like maintain a crazy table list of everybody who's handcuffed at the moment or any weird solutions like that. So there's a lot of really, really great ways to use state bags. And with all of that said, I think this is probably going to wrap up this ma first master series on state bags. I've got a ton of useful links down below to information about state bags, uh, as well as some forum posts, things like that, stuff that'll hopefully get you started. And definitely let me know down in the comments below if you found this useful, if you learned anything, let me know what you're excited to use state bags for. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, check the bell icon so you get notified when new videos come out. And as always, I've got my Discord link down below. We've got a growing community of really helpful people there. I'm active there. If you have any scripting questions, come in, drop them. I'm happy to do my best to uh, try to help you out. Anyways, thanks again for this uh, joining us on this inaugural episode of Master Series, and I hope to see you back soon.